Okay, so today we have a lecture on viruses. So what are viruses? So viruses are defined um, as obligate intracellular parasites. Okay, um, and are they alive or not? So there's a lot of debate um, on whether or not they're alive or not and the, for multiple reasons. Uh, for the MCAT's purpose, we don't really need to know whether it is yes or no. Okay? Um, so what is it made out of? So it's made out of nucleic acids and also proteins. And we'll see that um, these nucleic acids don't have to be specifically DNA, but they could also be RNA. Right? So the structure pretty much looks like this. Um, and so this is a capsid. Um, and you have inside, you have the nucleotides and the tail. So this top part is the head, um, and this whole bottom part is the tail. Um, and this right here is considered the shaft. And so this is actually where um, the nucleotides are um, injected into the, the cell, and we'll see how that exactly works. Uh, but if we can imagine, if we had some cell right here, um, the nucleotides would go through um, and go into the cell like that. Okay. Um, so just basically, so it's made out of nucleic acids, and this can be DNA, and it could be RNA. Okay. It can be single-stranded, or it can be double-stranded, and it also can be linear or circular. All right? So that's how we would define um, viruses. All right? And so now we're going to be talking about the life cycle. So there's three different life cycles. There's the lytic, there's the lysogenic, and also the productive. All right? And so just um, very briefly, so lytic, we can remember it by lysis, okay? Um, the actual cell gets lysed, okay? Or, and it explodes, okay? Lysogenic, um, we can think of it kind of like latent. Um, it's one where it's kind of in the, the stagnant, um, the virus is in a stagnant life cycle. Uh, it kind of just sits around and hangs out in the, in the cell. It doesn't really cause much damage, um, but continues to proliferate, continues to grow throughout the cell in the genome. Productive, um, we can think maybe provirus is, is, I guess, a name that we can remember. Also um, seen in animal cells. So we'll look um, a little bit more um, in depth into each one, starting with the lytic cycle. All right? So imagine if we had a cell like this, um, and this is a bacteria cell, so that's why it's a circular chromosome. Um, and so we have a virus that comes in like that. It comes in um, and it injects the DNA to go in like that. And I just chose it to be DNA for this example. It could just as well be RNA. Um, so the first thing is the insertion. The second step would be um, actual breakdown. So enzymes will break down all the, the DNA. So now we'll just have a bunch of little parts like that. Um, and so now we'll just replicate like normal. We'll, we'll replicate um, as if it was a normal genome. And then now uh, we're going to do the assembly. So we're, we're going to assemble all the things so that now we have these same um, viral uh, genomes right here that are replicated. And we'll have, you know, parts of the head replicated, parts of the, 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 the tail replicated. Um, and now we'll actually assemble everything together. So we have little viruses all packaged um, within the cell. And then this is where the lysis actually comes in. And that's the most important part. All this is just formation of it. Um, and so actually this cell burst open. Right? And so now all of the viruses can come out and now they can go and infect new viruses or new cells, sorry. Um, and so we see that that's what the obligate intracellular parasite comes in. Obligate being that it's dependent on something, you know, it, it requires something else to live and it's those cells. Okay, um, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is the lysogenic life cycle. Okay, so lysogenic, like we said, uh, was like a latent lifestyle, lifestyle for viruses. Um, so same, we're just going to use the bacteria and we have this virus like that. Okay, so in, it does the same injection. Um, and so now after that, if you can imagine this DNA uh, that is from the virus is going to be inserted here. So let's just, I'll draw it with a squiggly line like that. Okay, and so now these um, cells are just going to replicate like normal. So now after everything, uh, mitosis, um, 
we're gonna have this little two little cells right here with the two little viral genomes within there all right and they're just gonna keep replicating and, and on and on and on but the thing is eventually um, this may be somewhat rare but it can go into the lytic life cycle so it can break out do the lytic cycle and now it's going to undergo the lytic cycle and have that lysis that we saw before all right but pretty much lysogenic is this latent lifestyle it just gets built up within the genome and gets integrated within the genome and it's almost indistinguishable. All right? So the next thing that we're going to be looking at um, is the productive life cycle. And so the one thing that we need to know about the productive life cycle um, is that this is only seen in animals. All right? So only in animal cells. All right? um, so it's similar to the lytics, it's similar to the lytic life cycle, but there's some very big um, differences. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to see is that these uh, viruses are, have an envelope around it. So they have an envelope around it, um, uh, mainly made out of the, the plasma membrane of another cell. And we'll see why that's the case. Okay, so if we have this same cell like that, okay, and we have this virus with the envelope around it, so it's an envelope. So same thing's going to happen, you know, insertion and then... Um, uh, like we saw previously, uh, we're going to have this assembly of all these uh, little viruses within there. Okay, and there's a bunch of steps that were in between that I, I skipped, but uh, you remember that from the lytic cycle. Um, and so what happens now is, if you can imagine, the viruses do something like this. So they start budding off of the cell. They start budding off of the cell membrane. As you know, animal cells have a plasma membrane surrounding them. Um, and so uh, they, they start budding off like that and eventually they'll just get pinched off. They'll get pinched off and now they have this envelope surrounding them. And so the one thing that's important is that now that they have these envelopes, these cells have all these cell receptors, okay? And if something doesn't have an envelope that requires an envelope um, for the cell to ingest it by endocy uh, endocytosis, um, endocyte let's just spell it like that that's probably that's definitely wrong um, but um, if you can ingest it like that um, it needs those certain receptors that recognize the envelope so without this envelope it can't um, infect other types of cells so this envelope is very very important and one thing to remember is can it be done I, I Notice how I didn't say eukaryotes, I said animals only. Can it be done in plants? And the answer is no. And the reason why is because plants have cell walls. So if there's a cell wall around it, you can imagine that there's a very, very big, there's a very big border for all this. Um, and so they, they can't get pinched out like that. They can't butt out like that. So it's strictly um, for uh, animal cells. All right? Um, all right, so the last thing we're going to be looking at um, is just basic terminology. All right, so we're going to be looking at phrases like this. So we'll see this pretty rapidly on the, the MCAT, actually. Um, so stuff like RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, and we'll see also RNA-dependent uh, DNA polymerase, uh, DNA-dependent DNA polymerase, so you, can, you get the idea. So what does this mean? So this means that what we start with is RNA. So it's RNA dependent, so the virus itself is going to have RNA within it, okay? Um, and it requires an RNA polymerase um, to, to replicate it. So it's going to go RNA and go straight to RNA, all right? Now let's look at something different. So if we had the RNA dependent um, DNA polymerase, what would that look like? Well, that means the same virus is still going to have RNA, but now it's going to convert RNA and the DNA polymerase right here is going to convert it to DNA. So what can you think that does this? So a virus that has RNA but converts it to DNA and the DNA gets integrated into the genome. Well, this is like HIV, um, a retrovirus. Okay, so that's the definition of retrovirus. If they ever ask you, what's the definition of retrovirus? It has an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. Okay, and you can imagine a DNA-dependent uh, DNA polymerase would have a DNA virus in it. Um, and it requires a DNA polymerase to replicate it. And so it'll go straight into the genome um, of the DNA. All right, so just kind of keep track of all these terms. Um, but in terms of viruses, they, they kind of just stay pretty basic on the MCAT.